Today on City Line, it's one of the biggest sports events on the planet, the World Cup. We explore this global phenomena, meeting people who know the game inside and out, on and off the field. Hello everyone, I'm Karen Holmes Ward. Welcome to City Line. Well, while Bostonians are consumed with the NBA Finals, communities around the country and indeed around the world are gearing up for championship bragging rights in soccer. The World Cup kicks off on June 12th in South Africa, the first time the games have been held on the African continent. Alex Scott is a star player with the Boston Breakers and was named an all-star in women's professional soccer last year. She hails from London and played in World Cup competition for six years with the English national team. Also joining us is Makiba McCreary, executive director of World Cup Boston 2010, a local nonprofit organizing public soccer programs for Boston youth and families. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for Alex, me. let's uh, first talk about your star studded soccer career. When did you first develop an interest in professional soccer? Um, well, the WPS has been going for, this is the second year now, but I actually started playing back in England when I was eight years old. So started very young and you have to work your way all through the youth rank systems and now I got the chance to be a professional athlete playing in the WPS and you, I wouldn't change it. You were bending like Beckham, as they say. <laughs> I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were saying before the program that uh, in Boston we're so consumed with the Celtics, the Red Sox, the Patriots, mm -hmm. uh, but there are a lot of communities for which soccer is the their first choice. Yeah, you have so many people playing soccer over it, over here now. And what with the WPS being um, a platform for girls to aspire to play to now, it gives them that edge and they want to turn professional and they look at us playing on the field and as role models. And we like having that them come to our games and support us and being role models for the girls. Mm, I think we have some video of you uh, displaying some of your star okay. moves on the field. You're <laughs> a defender, right? I am, yes, a defender and outside back. So I run up and down the right flank. Uh, yeah, I, now I must admit, I don't know a lot about soccer. That's one of the most important positions on the field, obviously. Um, it's one of. Um, I like to defend and attack as well, so I help on both ends of the field. Mm -hmm. And you're playing against the Chicago team uh, here also, huh? I think so. I think so. that's the Chicago team. There day, you go. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. You're looking good out there. <laughs> Thank and, you. And you're going to be uh, competing in World Cup uh, next year when the women have their... Uh, yeah, um, we're going through our qualification phase at the moment. Um, I actually played, got the chance to play in a World Cup in China in 2007, which was my first experience at a World Cup, and just the atmosphere is amazing, and so hopefully we get to play in Germany next year for the Women's World Cup. Okay, and Makiba, you are working to bring some of the excitement of the World Cup here to Boston with the organization called World Cup Boston 2010. Tell us about that uh, group and what you have planned. Absolutely. Um, so we began our work about 12 months ago, and it's been an amazing partnership between South Africa Partners, which is a nonprofit, the city of Boston, um, and then multiple other stakeholders, um, including the Breakers and the New England Revs. Um, and so we put together a program that really celebrates the many cultures that the city has. Um, all we thought focused initially around soccer, but we've um, since really evolved into opportunities where we've brought together communities in the arts, um, in education, in community service, and of course in the sport itself. Mm -hmm. And tell us some of the uh, fun activities that you have planned that celebrate soccer over the next uh, month. Yeah, so on June 12th, we will be having um, the uh, a the viewing party, our opening viewing party at the House of Blues, and it's going to start at 10:30, um, showing Nigeria and Argentina, mm -hmm. and then at 1:30, I believe um, it's the U.S. versus England, mm -hmm. and so um, we'll be there um, for that event. Um, it's free to the public, and so we want everybody to come out. Then we will have a mini Youth World Cup tournament at Moakley Field on June 26th, mm -hmm. and so um, that's going to be, a, again, a wonderful opportunity for all of the families and children to come out and actually play in a fairly competitive tournament. Um, we will, of course, be on City Hall Plaza on July 11th, and we'll be celebrating the final match. Um, 
And in between that, there will be a number of other wonderful events, and everybody can go to our website at worldcupboston2010.org, and we'll keep updating it mm -hmm. as they come through. I remember uh, when Italy was in the finals last time in the World mm -hmm. Cup, and the north end of Boston just went crazy. I've seen yeah. pictures. <laughs> <laughs> Flags in the street. Um, such a good thing about the World Cup. It brings different types of people together to celebrate soccer, and maybe the people that don't really know or um, have seen soccer before it gives them the opportunity to explore it and know the atmosphere and then hopefully after the World Cup want to come down to Breakers games or go and see a Revs game or just be involved in the sport so that's why having this event a World Cup is so good. Mm. And I think there's a very large Brazilian community mm -hmm. in the uh, suburban area uh, in New Bedford, uh, in Framingham etc. Mm -hmm. Martha's, they, Vineyard. Martha's Vineyard. Yeah. They are really geared up for a World Cup aren't yeah, they? Yeah definitely and we're fortunate um, at our Breakers home games we have a Brazilian um, drumming band that come out to all our home games so it's a good they create a good atmosphere and like you said with Brazil being in the World Cup we have them them connections with them so it creates such a good atmosphere and it's a good place to be so uh, world uh, soccer is really an international sport Mm -hmm, definitely, and like you said, it brings people together. Just the World Cup being in South Africa, how amazing if for, is it for that country and people to go to South Africa and see the different cultures. And just like we said, it brings people together, the sport, which is good. Mayor Menino and the city of Boston are hoping to bring the World Cup uh, to Boston uh, in the future. And I know that uh, Jonathan Kraft and the Kraft family have mm -hmm. been very involved in, in trying to bring that here. That would be great for, for Boston, wouldn't it? It would be amazing. We are um, one of 18 uh, cities that are um, bidding for to be a host city. And I know that when we were a host in 94, it was considered one of the most successful um, World Cup events that has taken place. So I, we're really excited. It will be uh, great, I'm sure, for, for tourism, uh, for uh, a lot of attention to Boston. Mm -hmm. We consider ourselves an international city. This would be yet another opportunity to show the world uh, how far Boston has come over the years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like I said, this is my first time being in Boston. I've been here, this is my second year now, and I absolutely love this city, and I wouldn't like to be in any other city. I just love Boston. Well, Alex, thank you so much, and thank good you. luck out on the field. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And Makiba, I know you've got your work cut out for you over the next uh, four to six weeks. Good luck yeah, to you, too. thank you. <laughs> All right, everybody, for a full calendar of events planned by World Cup Boston 2010, visit the World Cup page on thebostonchannel.com. And remember, the games air on ABC and ESPN. Up next, the physics of soccer, how to improve your game with the help of science.